Oh my gosh, that's a good cup of tea. Hey my dudes, it's Steph. Super excited to chat with you today and do a quick little Q&A. Let's jump right into it. Red light therapy. Do you target it or have it over your whole body? Have you noticed any differences? I promise, 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 I have a full red light review video coming, hopefully in the next like handful of videos I'm doing, but um, typically I just do whole body. I will literally get out of the shower fully exposed and uh, try to target my whole body. If um, I happen to be having a harder period, I will just target my abdomen area and it helps with cramps. Definitely notice um, better mood using red light regularly, the days I use it very regularly, as well as just more energy. That and Organifi Pure are really like the magic combo for me. <laughs> and there's a lot more I promise I will say about it in that upcoming video. How are you feeling endometriosis wise? That's a question. <laughs> My like women's health journey has been a journey. It's really strange. When I had surgery last year, they found a very small amount of endometriosis. Like it was only in one place. Everything else that they found was endosalpingiosis, which there's another vlog I'll find and link below on that. Which like the amount that you have doesn't, you know, it's not equivalent to the amount of pain you have. You could have stage one endo and excruciating pain. You could have stage four endo and no pain at all. So not that that really matters, but after surgery, I didn't really feel better, which sort of is to be expected because they tell you the first three months after surgery, your first three periods are going to be rough because you're recovering from them like scraping out your insides but even after that um i had the cyst suspected cyst rupture last year and then last month i had something very similar happen we ended up running to the er because it was just like 10 of 10 pain to where i was like sick to my stomach and so much pain um which is you know that's a lot of pain. In some ways, it's odd. I feel like most women with endo will experience some sort of relief, at least for a period of time after surgery, and that never happened for me. If anything, I actually feel like my cycles have been worse. And so, I don't know. I don't know that I believe it. so much of it is like an endo issue. I wonder if more of it is a hormone issue and or slash a liver issue because your liver processes your hormones and filters them make sure you stay nice and balanced and regulated and everything and we know my liver is not in the best shape so it's a little bit of a tricky cycle right now because i also have mast cells so we can't do the things to help support my liver like castor oil packs or tudka or the things that would help I'm just way too sensitive to it and so I am currently in the process of getting a Dutch hormone panel test sent over and we're really gonna take a deep dive it costs like $500 <laughs> into my hormones just to kind of see what's going on right now it just feels like my main problem is my period it feels like it my life just runs around it and I can't make progress with nervous system work trauma liver stuff like anything because it's just i'm feeling stuff pre-period during my period and recovering after the period and it's like i get one or two good weeks out of the month and so we just need to find a way to make it more tolerable and so i'm really really hopeful i am also trying out some other things right now to just see if we can kind of balance some things out so i'll keep you guys posted on how that goes but yeah hormones are definitely causing me some problems right now i think chamomile is like my favorite tea ever although i'm always down to try new teas so if you have any suggestions for your favorites you know what to do this is a great question how do you deal with it when you have a few great days and then you hit a setback 
it's actually a bit easier for me when I have several good days and then I hit a bad day because I'm so grateful for the good days that I just had. I'm like, well, that's to be expected. I think it's much harder when I have several bad days in a row for a week or two or however long it goes on and you're just not sure when you will see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I think most of us can get through things if there is an end date in sight, but it's tough when you have not a lot of control over how you feel and you're just not sure when that's going to be. But I think what helps me the most on my bad days is to just treat them as one day and that is not an easy thing to do to literally just from the time you wake up just take it one day at a time i think where at least i tend to spiral is when i start thinking like i'm never gonna get better and it's like okay none of us are promised tomorrow let's just focus on today if today is a bad day today's a bad day and that's okay it doesn't mean tomorrow will be and you know i think most of us have had flares and even if it's lasted a few weeks or months usually we end up coming out of it and so we also have this track record we can go back to and remember okay this isn't gonna last forever but i also do want to say i really do think it is important to grieve <laughs> things intentionally um and with purpose like i do think there is a difference between kind of being whiny and like woe is me and this like unproductive just sitting in negativity but then within the context of therapy or intentionally taking time to journal and process what you're feeling, you know, chronic illness, it's like, it's a hard journey and it's this ongoing trauma because as long as you're ill, you're going to doctors and you're getting new diagnoses and you're trying new things that may or may not go well and you may end up in the hospital and you're missing out on important events and you know it's there's so much there and so it's not healthy to just act like everything's okay either so i find that when i take time to like intentionally grieve and feel sad and cry and process and then i'm like okay i'm done now like i've set the timer for an hour or two or whatever it's gonna be or just give myself the compassion for the day to be like i'm gonna be a poop today you know like you you'll just know i feel like when you start to be in tune with your emotions and stuff you just tend to start to know what you need but uh, it's a fine balance okay so the rest of these are dnrs questions so if you're not sure what the dnrs is i will leave a link below maybe up here to my past q a which touches a little bit on what the dnrs is but our first dnrs question is how long does the program last and how long before it helped so, um, Annie Hopper, who created the DNRS, recommends committing to the program for at least six months. Why did I say that? Six months. I'm aiming to commit to it for at least a year, um, just because we're talking about literally changing the physiological structure of your brain. And that's going to take time. And so if you want to see that longer lasting change, you're gonna need repetition for a long period of time. As far as how long it's gonna take to help, that's really gonna vary from person to person because we're all different. But for me, because I had already been in therapy and have been doing other nervous system supports, within the first two weeks, I was feeling changes, positive changes, I should say. Um, and really every time that I do my DNRS rounds, I feel more energized, less anxious, just overall I feel like a happier human. Obviously I can't always DNRS my way out of a flare or anything like that, but it definitely encourages me to keep sticking with it. Speaking of how to stay motivated to continue DNRS exercises. So yeah, I mean, once you start seeing those positive changes or benefits, you don't really want to stop <laughs> doing your DNRS rounds and stuff. Also, I think what's really helped me is to just kind of integrate it into 
my natural routine. I'll basically start it as I'm dry brushing to get in the shower. I'll start saying the script out loud and then I'll do the first part of it, like going back to a past memory while I'm in the shower. And then usually as I'm coming out and going to red light for 20 minutes, I will do a future visualization. And I know you're supposed to do it an hour a day and there are these like movements you do with it and you're like moving around and I don't do like the DNRS to a T. I don't. I do it for like 30 to 40 minutes a day, five times a week. I loosely follow the script and I just kind of make it work for me and what feels right. Oh, I had to pour myself a fresh cup of tea for this next one because <laughs> It's the big question. So I have basically been DM'd some varying form of this question probably five or six times in the last couple of months. And I love it, I do. Um, and the question is basically like, can you share your experience doing the DNRS as a Christian? I'm interested in it, but feel a little unsure if I'll be able to do the program to its full extent. Thoughts on doing the DNRS as a Christian? So first of all, I just wanna say like, thank you so much for <laughs> trusting me and my opinion with a question like this. I know I'm very selective with who I let speak truth into my life, who I seek counsel from, so I really do view it as such an honor and I've been wanting to make a video like this for a little while just because it's hard to answer that question in a DM and the nuances of it all, but truly I feel so honored and so you know this is something I've been thinking about a lot that I've been praying through and um, I do take it very, very seriously. Before I actually answer, I also just want to preface that I think as Christians, we have what I like to call tier one issues, which are things that pretty much every Christian should agree on. Like Jesus is the son of God type of stuff theology, you know? And then we have like tier two and three issues, which might be things like baptism, where like scripture might not outright be super clear on what we should believe. And so we have to do our best to study scripture, pray, wrestle through, and eventually come to our own conviction or beliefs about these things. But I don't think it's worth us getting into these arguments over and being like, no, I'm right, no, you're right, no. You know what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna share my personal conviction and belief about doing the DNRS as a Christian. I'm not saying that this is law. If you feel very uncomfortable doing the DNRS as a Christian, don't do it. So I'm gonna be really honest with you. I have not watched these videos since like 2019. So I don't remember verbatim everything that she says, but I have a general idea and I took notes and I remember the script and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna go off that for my answer. But it's interesting because nobody has outright said why they feel a little uneasy as Christians doing the DNRS. But my guess is going to be A, she does use the word energy quite a few times, and B, part of what the program entails is you doing future visualizations, and I think to some people that can come off as manifestation. So those are kind of the two things I'm going to address. If there's something else that's weirding you out, just feel free to DM me or comment below. I'm happy to talk through that. So I'll touch on it energy first um and i think it's so funny as christians there are just some buzzwords that can really make us our little holy spirit radar go off <laughs> and i think energy is one of those words but you have to remember in the context of anatomy and in the nervous system our nerves travel using electrical energy trauma is stored in the body as energy so when you are rewiring your brain when you are even releasing trauma it takes a great deal of energy to do that you might notice if you've ever processed trauma you're really really tired and exhausted afterwards when you're feeling a bit anxious you might feel the need to shake because your body needs to release that energy so everything that i have seen in the dnrs 
has led me to believe that this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about new age practices. <laughs> we're purely talking about it within the context of the nervous system. When it comes to what is involved in the program, you're meant to think back to a sort of positive memory. It could be a memory where you feel really calm and safe and relaxed. It could be a memory where you feel you have all this energy and there was a sense of adventure and maybe you went tubing or snowboarding or I don't, I don't know. You're drawing your brain back to that time and remembering what that was like and then you do the same thing, but you visualize just a future <laughs> that you would want, um, maybe that's similar to the memory. And so the intention when you're doing the future visualization is not because you are trying to manifest that into existence, it's to teach you how to hope again. Because when you have chronic illness, hope feels like an unsafe, Thing. And so the way that I have been utilizing the program is to think about future possibilities, just like what is possible. And honestly, I remember watching these videos and taking notes. And the more I learned, the more I was in awe of how God created our brains. And I just kept thinking back to that verse in Romans 12. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As I've been doing it this year, I've also thought a lot about uh, Philippians. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I think this is a very biblical concept. Part of becoming a Christian and starting to renew your mind in the way the verse is talking about, which is you begin to see everything through the lens of God and his word, that in itself is a process of retraining your brain. He is the original creator of the brain of neuroplasticity and whatever way you can design your brain retraining to make it work for you, to make it feel authentic and comfortable to you. Like, I typically don't do visualizations of like actual events and stuff I have coming up because I just don't want to be upset or disappointed if it doesn't go the way I want it to go. I don't want to dive into like manifesting so I just keep it really light in general. I tend to do my rounds kind of around the season so we're going into fall now and I've been starting to just think about fun fall memories and the visualizations that I might have. Yeah sorry that was a bit rambly but I do hope that answers your question. If you're still unsure I'd also recommend a book called The Brain That Changes Itself. Personally I'm super comfortable with all of it but I think everybody also just needs to go through their own journey and wrestling through what they believe and stuff. And so I hope that's at least enough to help you get started if you're still kind of figuring out what you want to do. But I love that you asked that question and that you trusted me enough to answer it. Last question, do you think you'll have to terminate this page as part of your DNRS journey? No. Um, no, it is a valid question, but no, I will never get rid of this channel way too passionate about all of you and becoming a practitioner and helping people feel better that's my dream however after this video my channel will be changing quite a bit um, because to your point although my husband does help me moderate comments so i don't constantly have to see challenge talk i think i'm at a point where i just want to create happier content i want to create content that just feels safe for people and their nervous system. Um, I wanna take people out of whatever they're feeling that day. If it's a bad day, they can just click on one of my videos and kind of escape a little bit. But I do definitely want to keep healing as like a thread line in my channel because I know so many of you come here and you're like, wow, it's nice to see one of your day in the life and it's like mine. You're not doing all these crazy things that just make me feel worse about the way that I feel. 
Um, and so I definitely want to keep it real and keep that, but I think I want to challenge myself and others to really experience the fullness of life despite the challenges <laughs> that we have and just finding ways to change our brains, to rewire our brains, to romanticize life even when it just feels so freaking hard, <laughs> to challenge people to just seek joy. And um, I think that will look like a lot of seasonal vlogs. So I'm really excited. I've been working on this fall one for like a month where I have lots of fun fall activities coming up in that one and maybe some seasonal morning and nighttime routines. I will still keep the day in the life so if you guys want to see them. Um, I do have the red light review coming up, I promise. And I don't know if I've ever told you this, um, I am an English major graduate. <laughs> so I am really into books and just wanting to maybe do just more fun bookstore read with me vlogs or um, just things to kind of help you maybe escape <laughs> in a fun and safe way and to just help you heal and change your nervous system. I hope you will like what's coming. I've been working probably harder on these videos than I've ever worked on my channel in my life. <laughs> but I'm really excited and, and I'm hopeful that they will be less triggering for all of us, less, less challenge talk going on in them and just a good place for us to hang out. And uh, if there is anything similar to what I just talked about that you think you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. And I'm like always adding to my idea list now. I'm so excited for what's to come and I hope you are too. I will see you on our next adventure.